What's going on, Wolfpack? I'm Hara Sakib. Today is Friday, May 22nd, and I'm here with your distant learning news. Today is the last day of the regular AP testing schedule. Today's tests are AP Comparative Government, AP Statistics, and AP Spanish. For those of you who are taking the makeup test later on, please check the schedule on the College Board website. Hey Wolfpack, textbooks and equipment drop-offs are happening next week. Please be sure to check your email for the schedule and order it's going to happen. On that note, let's check out how drop-offs are going to work in the parking lot next week. Hey Wolfpack, Mr. McCracken here with an update for you about next week's property pickup and return. So we've got for this a schedule laid out where we have seniors coming in first on Tuesday, going through the days with then juniors on Wednesday, sophomores on Thursday, and freshmen on Friday. We have a route laid out. You may not need to go to all of these stations. I know some of you don't have any PE locker items to pick up, no athletic stuff to drop off, and no band or choir stuff. So you might just start off with station four or five over there in the culinary parking lot. But here's the route. We start with PE. Stuff that was left in lockers has been bagged for you very carefully. Um, we have tried to do that without having to cut off any locks, but if you had a lock that wasn't on record with your PE teachers, possible it was cut. Whatever was in your locker, you are responsible for. So if you had other people's stuff in your locker, you're going to get a bag. You're responsible to get that stuff back to them. Next, we've got the station for athletics for the return of uniforms and equipment. Everything that you need to return should be bagged before you get there with your name on it. So have it in a bag, have your name on it, have your activity and your, uh, and your level written on that bag or tagged on that bag somehow so that you can just hand it over. Next we've got band, instrument return, choir dresses. If you left stuff in the band or choir room, it will be possible at that time for staff to go in and get it for you, but all all of this process is going to be drive-through only. Everyone stays in their vehicle. Only staff is handling things outside. We'll get it to you, get you taken care of. Next, culinary students. Some of you had items in your culinary lockers. This is going to work much like the PE pickup is. Everything's been bagged for you. You're going to be handed a bag of everything that was in your locker. You are responsible for all those items in your locker. Next, big stop here, library. Number one, I want everyone to know if you have a parking permit, parking permits need to be returned at this station at the library. Next, if you are a senior or a student who is not returning to an Elk Grove Unified School District school next year, then you need to return your Chromebook. I say that again, seniors are returning Chromebooks. Everyone else is not returning their Chromebook unless you're not coming back to an Elk Grove school next year. Um, you're also returning textbooks. So textbooks get returned here, but we've got the question, hey, AP students, if you still have a test that you are taking after these dates, then you are able to hold on to your textbook. We will arrange for another drop-off for those textbooks, but we want to try to get, get everything we can in on this one. But if you need your AP textbooks, hang on to them. Uh, likewise, uh, if you if you need your, your Chromebook seniors for something this last week, you can still hold on to it. We will create another opportunity for return of those for you too. But again, we're trying to get in everything we can. So at the library, again, you're turning in textbooks. Some textbooks have been labeled obsolete. See your Synergy mail, a list was provided to you there. Obsolete textbooks, we don't want back. Those are just a hassle and gonna be piles of work for librarians that we don't need. If you've got an obsolete textbook, you're welcome to keep that book or you're welcome to discard it, throw it away. But all of the other books, we do need returned. If they're not on that discard obsolete list, then we need those returned. Uh, library reading books, those need to be returned. So I think that's about it there for the library stop. Next stop, the yearbook. I am still crossing my fingers. We're still hoping that your books might be in by this uh, by this date, but I got to tell you, it's not looking good. We're probably going to have to set up another date for your books to be picked up. Um, but seniors, you will see Mrs. Betancourt there because she's got some items for some of you seniors that she's returning to you. So um, that station will still be a stop at number six. So notice that this route is going to take you through that bus loop and you're going to go out onto Bighorn out there. So that is our plan for property pickup and return. Uh, remember that we've got specific times. So if your last name starts with A through D, you're coming between 9 and 10.30 a.m. E through L, 10.30 to 12. M through R, 12 to 1.30. And S through Z, 1.30 to 3 o'clock. So 
please try to come on your given days and times. There are some more specific instructions you may be receiving from PE teachers, athletic director, and your performing arts teachers. There are some specific instructions for those students, uh, but for everyone else, we need you to really stick closely to this schedule and try to come on your assigned day and your assigned time so that the lines aren't too long and the wait isn't too bad. We want to be able to take care of you and get you out. Again, hope you're all being safe, staying healthy, you're well, and are, hope you're looking forward to a good summer. Take care, everyone. Let's check out a video from Lily about a song competition called Eurovision. Hey there Wolfpack, I'm Lily Briel here with an overview of what the Eurovision Song Contest has looked like this year. But perhaps first I should backtrack a little bit. What exactly is Eurovision? Eurovision, for those of you who don't know, is a song contest that takes place across Europe every May. Each country participating presents a song to represent their nation, and through televoting and professional judges, scores are given to each performance to find a winner. The competition started all the way back in 1956, with only seven countries participating, and has grown with each passing year, even including Australia in 2015. The idea was to create something to unite all of Europe after the devastation of World War II. And what better way than a theatrical song competition across the continent and then some? Now back to the present. What has made this year's competition different from the rest? Like many other places in the world, countries across Europe are also under lockdown because of the coronavirus pandemic. The Netherlands was excited to open up to the contest as their slogan cheered, only having to end up shutting down to abide by government social distancing laws. What has made this decision so shocking and garner the announcement video such a divided likes to dislikes ratio was that in all the 64 years of Eurovision, this is the first time ever it has been cancelled. All of the artists had been in the middle of releasing their songs to the public when this news dropped, so would there be a replacement show in 2021? Would Rotterdam be hosting the contest again? Less than a month after announcing the contest's cancellation, Eurovision came back with several replacement segments. One was the Eurovision Home Concerts, seven shows of various performers from this year and previous years, singing their songs or covering others' songs from their homes. Then, partnering with YouTuber and beauty guru Nikki Tutorials, Eurovision hosted interviews of each of the 2020 contestants. Both of these segments are available to view on their official YouTube channel. Rotterdam also put together alternative semifinals and a grand finale show that were live-streamed on YouTube. While not actually a competition, the semifinal shows honored the songs that would have aired during those respective halves. And last Saturday, the grand finale titled Europe Shine a Light aired with Eurovision artists of past and present. The grand finale currently has over 1.5 million views on their channel, proudly displaying the sense of unity Eurovision is able to provide. And great news! While no winner was crowned this year, both Rotterdam and this year's contestants will all be able to hold a traditional contest next May. That's all the Eurovision news I have for you today, Wolfpack. Back to you, anchors. Now let's see what John has for us in this week's sports interview. So honestly, I think that we're that we're gonna have some positive outcomes from here on out. You know, like everything's gonna go according to plan. We're gonna get back to school, back to the field. Everything's gonna be good, hopefully. You know, I just want to see the stadium packs for the first game back. It's really all I want. And then if I have any tips for students at CO to stay in shape, um, just do whatever you can possible, like. Go look up some workouts on YouTube or something. Like do them in the garage, backyard. Go for runs around your neighborhood. Um, a really long bike ride. Like, I don't... Yeah. I'm out. Oof. Well, that's all I have for you today, Wolfpack. I'm Harusaka. Remember, the strength of the pack is the wolf. And the strength of the wolf is a pack. Have a fantastic Friday, Wolfpack.